you and I have talked about the state's segregated schools, and your, your answer has been to point the finger at the other guy and say that he's failed urban New Jersey. What's the uncomfortable truth about this progressive governor and people of color in the state as you see it? He's failed the black community. I mean, the most prominent black pastor in the state, David Jefferson from Metropolitan Baptist Church, said to him in a Star Ledger recent interview, you have failed the black community. You can't treat black people this way. I mean, he's done nothing to help those communities that have been plagued by disinvestment for 40 plus years. I so how do you change that? What's, what's going to be different about, about your approach? I'm going to work with community leaders to make sure that there's capital that's invested in those communities and there's economic development that benefits the current residents. I'm not about gentrification. I'm not about people being dislocated or relocated. But we need to work in partnership with community leaders to make sure there's economic development and then economic opportunity to address the worst injustice of all, economic injustice. And believe me, we've got economic injustices here in New Jersey. We need to revitalize our urban centers and those neighborhoods where there is black people living uh, primarily. You talk about only 2% of state contracts going to uh, minority firms. Uh, are you committing to more minority access to contracts or cabinet positions? What can, what can you say that's gonna be different, noticeably different between the way you approach access for people of color and the way this administration has. One way to promote economic development and economic opportunity in minority communities is by allowing them access uh, to have more state contracts. And so I've just continued to use the statistics that have been used by the black community in criticizing Phil Murphy. I mean, listen, the only black owned asset management firm in the state is suing Phil Murphy for racial discrimination because it wasn't given an opportunity to manage pension funds. So, I mean, I think that says it all. So the Monmouth poll that we talked about earlier found that taxes and the economy were the top issues uh, uh, for voters. You've been hitting that pretty hard over the past few weeks, uh, especially. How does the Chitterelli economic plan differ from Phil Murphy's economic plan? Number one, I believe that we need to lower property taxes and New Jerseyans agree. We have the highest property taxes in the nation. Phil Murphy never talks about lowering property taxes. We can do that with a new school, fund, school funding formula that doesn't leave any student, any child, any community behind. It doesn't adversely affect the quality of education. And we need to make New Jersey a much better place to do business so we can create jobs. I am not gonna be the governor of a state that has the highest property taxes in the nation and is known as being the worst place in the country to do business. I mean, that's just a death spiral, economically speaking. So um, those are the changes we're gonna put in place to change those two facts. We keep hearing about, you know, the high unemployment rate here, but the fact is that a lot of companies and businesses are looking for employers, uh, employees, and a lot of employees are out there um, not working rather than going back to work in what they feel uh, is a job that doesn't pay enough or doesn't provide enough of a lot of things that they need and want from a job. How do you get these employees back to work? David, we have one of the highest unemployment rates in the nation, and yet everywhere you go, there is a help wanted sign. Those two things are totally incongruent. Let me be clear, there will always be hardship cases, sadly. I will provide the proper kind of social safety net we are our brothers and sisters keeper, but we got to get people back to work. And the way you do that is stop being so darn generous with all the unemployment benefits, have the Department of Labor actually verify whether or not you're looking for work as a condition of getting your unemployment benefits and stop with the eviction moratorium. It's time to get back to work. There's openings everywhere. And you're out there on the beat. I know you've heard this from small business owners. I have. Everyone that's got a help wanted sign, you go and talk to them. They tell you that people walk in and say, you know, I'm willing to work, but you got to pay me cash. I don't want to lose my unemployment benefits. What's happening? Last question. Last question before I let you go. Uh, we should be seeing federal approval for vaccines for kids 5 to 11 as early as next week. Uh, what's your uh, message to parents of kids who are in that age group? Aside from it's a parent's choice, would you recommend it? And would you have had your youngsters uh, taking the shot, were they in that age group? 
I haven't seen the clinical trial results uh, from those uh, drugs that are about to be approved. I'd like to see them. I'd like to see how big the sample size was in which the drug was tested. But at the end of the day, I want to believe if the FDA is approving it, they believe it's safe and effective. And uh, but at the end of the day, it's also up to parents whether or not children should be vaccinated for COVID-19 or the Delta variant. All right, Jack Cittarelli, Republican candidate for governor. Thanks for coming on, man, and being accessible during this uh, campaign, and good luck to you. My pleasure, David.